All right guys, so today I'm gonna to be showing you how to set up an Elegoo Neptune 3 Plus or really any of the Elegoo Neptune printers to be able to create really cool time lapses like this. What we're gonna be using to create these time lapses is an old DSLR camera that I have. Now, you have a couple different options. You can use like a Beagle Cam, Octoprint, and I'm sure there's some other options out there, but we're gonna be using this Canon DSLR. We're gonna have it mounted on a tripod here, and then in Cura, we'll put G-code in Cura to have this move the print head to either, either side here and move the build plate to a certain position, and we'll snap a picture based on triggering that DSLR camera with one of these little micro switches. So if you're interested in doing this, make sure to watch through to the end of the video. All right, so what we need to be able to accomplish the time lapse on this Elego is we need one of these little micro switches and I chose one that has a little roller wheel. They have them that don't have the wheel on it, but I'll drop a link down in the description. You're gonna need a camera trigger cable for your particular model of DSLR camera. Now, this one is a older Canon T6 Rebel. And on the side here, it has an input for a 2.5 millimeter camera remote trigger. So you can buy like an entire remote trigger system. Some of them are Bluetooth. Some of them have push button device at the bottom and you can cut the end of that off and use that plug to plug into the camera. Or you can just buy a 2.5 millimeter male to female cable on Amazon. Really cheap, I think this was probably maybe four or five bucks. And we'll just snip the end off here. We'll determine which two wires when touched together trigger the shutter on this camera. And then we will solder that to the limit switch. And then we'll get the limit switch mounted on the printer. And then we should be able to create some really cool looking time lapses. I'm gonna actually choose to mount this limit switch on the other side here. All right, so here's the part I designed. We just need to pop out the supports in the center here. And there's probably gonna be some on the bottom here. So I made this so you could recess some M2 Allen head machine screws either through the bottom. And I also made the holes small enough where those same screws, if you don't wanna mount the screws through the bottom, you can just thread them in through the switch right into the top. So it's an interference fit in the holes and it will grab them and kinda tap itself and hold the switch in place. All we're gonna do is plug the side into the camera. We need to cut this end off and we need to determine which two wires activate the shutter on the camera. And you'll see that we have three wires in here. So we need to determine which two activate the shutter on the camera. So we're gonna do that now. Two of them together should do like an autofocus and the other two should snap a picture. So we're gonna do white and yellow with red stripe first. And that sounds like it's the focus How about the yellow and red and red together. All right, now before we mount our wire to the switch, we need to determine which contacts we wanna use. And we wanna use a normally open set of contacts, so it's probably gonna be really hard to see on here, but this terminal here is C, which is common. This one is NO, which is normally open, which means that the continuity between these two terminals is open until the switch is depressed. What we're gonna do is we're gonna bring some solder over and we're just going to tin these terminals quickly. You don't want to hold the heat on here too long because you will start melting the body of the switch. All right, so we'll plug into our remote shutter trigger and we're going to test this out now. And as you can see, we're snapping pictures. All right, so our next step is to mount this onto the bracket that we designed. I'm gonna use some M2 by 12s and I'm going to feed them up through the bottom here. All right, so as you can see, nice and flush on the bottom here. And then all we have to do is take our switch. It fits right over the top. We're gonna to use these ridiculously small nuts to hold this on. And now that switch isn't going anywhere. And then I'm gonna add a little finishing touch here all right, so we're gonna be mounting this switch assembly on the printer now, and I'm using a 632, and on the back side, what we're gonna use is a flat washer, a number six flat washer, and then number six Keps nut. So a Keps nut basically has the lock washer built into it. Now you can see I made this adjustable, so whenever we figure out where our X axis ends up here, you'll see 
the wheel hits that exactly. So I could either adjust this out all the way here to have it hit out there. You know, once we figure out exactly where it is, I'm gonna lock this down. All right, now to get the printer to actually move into position, we're actually just gonna reprint this switch mounting block here. And what you wanna do in Cura is go up to extensions and then post processing and then click on modify G code. Now within here, you're gonna have a drop down called add a script. And then if you scroll down and add a script, you'll see a selection time lapse. So pick time lapse. So this is the G code command to trigger that. So M240, pause length is how long it sits at these coordinates. And then this is where the print head parks. So the print head's gonna park at zero, which means all the way over to the left. So what we really wanna do now, since the build volume on this is 320 by 320, I wanna test 320 on here. Print head Y is how far it moves the Y axis, so it mo how far it moves the build plate. And we'll just go with these initial settings here. Now park feed rate, that's how fast it gets to there. But we're going to mess around with this here and we can abort the print while we're testing this if we need to, if we find that we need to make some adjustments. So what I'm gonna do now is since I have that post-processing G code in, I'm gonna click on slice. Okay, now we're just gonna take the SD card, put it in the printer and let's test this out. All right, so before you go to do the time-lapse, one important setting on your lens, especially on the Canons, I'm not sure how the Nikons are set up, but you have an AF and MF. AF is autofocus, MF is manual focus. So you want this to be on MF. So after it prints the first layer, it should bring this print head all the way over to one side and we'll determine where we need to adjust the switch to. All right, so if you saw that, it went all the way over to the side, paused for a minute, and then it's starting on the second layer. So obviously it didn't contact the switch because our camera did not take a picture. Right there is our perfect spot. And then all we do is we tighten down our screw and we're good to go. All right, and then after you're all set up, you just grab your favorite editing software. In this case, I'm using Filmora. And then we just import all of our pictures in from our last print. So it looks like there's quite a few of them. And then all we're gonna do in this case is drag them down to our timeline. All right, and then I just exported it as a video at 50X speed. And then I can take this and I can build a short or YouTube video. Now, one other really important suggestion I have for you guys, and I know you could probably do this with an icon, but on the Canons, you can buy a power adapter instead of running a battery on here because I've noticed on large prints that are, you know, probably 500 or more layers, you're only gonna get so much of this camera sitting here while it's printing and snapping pictures before this battery dies. And then this thing can just sit here all day long snapping pictures and you don't have to worry about it running out of battery or having to swap a battery. All right guys, and that's all there is to it. It's super simple. You only need a few components. I put all the links to the components down in the description below and if you found this video useful, use, useful? If you found this video useful, uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave that in there. I'm not editing that out. So if you found this video useful, uh, make sure to drop a like on it. It helps me out. Please consider subscribing. I got new stuff coming out all the time. If you have any suggestions for other content, please let me know in the comments down below. Uh, and check out this video right here. This one's pretty cool.